Hello, hello, hello. Happy New Year's Eve or Happy New Year's. Merry New Year's wherever you are, wherever this video pops up. Um, ah, it's the last day of 2020 here in Texas in my area. Um, it's kind of like Houston said, hold my beer. Tornado warning. <laughs> Shouldn't we had a winter before we have spring tornadoes? But um, <laughs> I don't know. 2020 has been one of those wild years. You know, it's kind of like thinking about New Year's Eve. You know, usually we make resolutions, which sounds like resolve, which reminds me of um, bleach, Lysol, Pine Sol, you know, all of those things. It's hard to get right now. Um, I don't know. I don't want to think of all of the negative things I want to change and concentrate on that to start a new year. I think new year wishes and hopes to bring in like more gratitude, more positivity, love, peace, friendship, you know, that that's the kind of things, you know, I like to wish upon a year. Um, so my wish for all of you this 2021 and 2020 for the ending of it, I wish you all find love, companionship, and something to smile about each day. Uh, okay, so what's going on with me? So Christmas, uh, yes, I still have my skinny Christmas tree up. Um, <laughs> with my mom's thing, it was kind of, you know, it hit right after Thanksgiving, right after I had decorated the yard, and it was harder to get the Christmas spirit. I think some people sending me some Christmas cards and looking at my little eight-year-old made me... Um, so, yeah, even in 2020, we got to throw, celebrate the holidays, you know, show kids how to be um, resilient, you know. Even if the, the world's going to hell, you carry on. <laughs> so, um, had a wonderful Christmas, actually. It was one of the best Christmases I've had in a long time, you know. I didn't get huge things. I got special things. Um, I got time with people I love. Um, you know, that was you know, wonderful, you know, um, spending time with my daughters, my husband, my friends, you know, my family, you know, that's priceless time. You know, I, I, I think I've gotten really appreciative. I don't know if I've gotten to be one of those sad, sad people. They're just like, oh, I'm so thankful. Um, I still have some of my spit and fire. Um, <laughs> let's not talk about insurance, um, companies. <laughs> I have gotten, had, uh, from my child's medicine to um, Social Security and, you know, not fun, Medicare. So still waiting. I got a little text saying they were working on my paperwork for my power chair. You know, I can still walk right now. Um, I do have to sit more often and I can't do major things. Um, but here's hoping that we can actually travel. Um, this new variant of COVID isn't um, fucking all that up, you know. I don't know. So what am I going to do? What I have through Christmas and through this little time in my little part of grief and with, you know, even I started thinking about when I started this channel, you know, when I start, when I got diagnosed, um, got diagnosed and uh, confirmed October of 2019, you know, I'd seen that some people that were diagnosed around the same time I was had passed away. And so other ones are bed bound and trached. I don't know why I got ALS, um, but I am so thankful that I am a um, slow um, progressor, you know, and that could change at any moment. You know, it's like, uh, it's a reminder that impermanence is the only continuous thing. Um, when the only thing you can count on is that things will change. Nothing stays exactly the same. You know, that's, and sometimes that's good. I mean, when you're in a year like 2020, no one wants this to stay this way. You want to take the good things out of it, learn the lessons, and, you know, none of the craziness, none of the anger, none of the fear, um, just really hard. So I've been on this whole heal thyself, um, you know, with my form of ALS, um, I'm a genetic ALS patient. <laughs> C9, um, there are no 
medications on the market right now that specifically treat my disease. There are some that are coming, but they're not here now. So now I take the Tetica. Um, now it's not amphibian, now it's bear. I'm just, I'm hoping they're not destroying all these animals, you know? I hope they can get a synthetic. Um, you know, the medical marijuana. Oh, I actually made the mar medical marijuana card for my, the company in my area, Compassionate um, Cultivation. I mean, how cool is that? I'd show you, but I don't know where it is right now. Um, <laughs> you know, I, they say that um, CBD and THC protect the motor neurons. That's what the thought of the bile um, from these animals um, that will help slow the death of motor neurons. So I'm on metformin, just, you know, I know that that's in clinical studies. I'm on that for just diabetes. Um, don't know if any of it's making a difference. I mean, you know, my sweet, sweet sisters have been so supportive. Um, my sister, my little sister, um, had, had been in through some scary things like breast cancer. And, um, she was so gracious that gave me the, um, yoga or not yoga. I, I'm the yoga one. She is too now, but, um, the meditation uh, retreat the day after. So in learning that October of 19, uh, 2019 and really doing a lot of it this year, I can tell you that that has helped me. Um, I can't speak more about the... Meditation has really helped me. Prayer has really helped me. You know, when you can't get medicine, when you can't get um, treatment, um, yeah, you can get physical therapy, occupational therapy. I still do those exercises, but um, they're expensive, and I really don't want to go to the place that's right next to a hospital and catch COVID. Um, yeah, no, thank you. Um, so I found that that has been so healing for me um, in October of this year, you know, things were great, just not that, you know, then things, another slew things of stuff happened. I decided over Christmas that I, um, you know, I got all the, it's like serendipity when you start, um, you know, asking for help and wanting to figure a way to feel better. Um, I got a book in soft, so I think I saw a YouTube video and then I actually ordered a book called When the Body Says No by Gabor Mate, M-A-T-E. It's probably French, and um, I murder French. Nothing against French people. My mouth just doesn't work that way. <laughs> I'm serious. I used to call Bordeaux, um, Bordeaux. It's terrible, I know. Very embarrassing. Um, I don't care. <laughs> but I don't want to offend anybody. So... You know, when they're talking about, apparently, ALS has ALS personalities, they would doubt, some physicians, neurologists, would doubt that um, somebody's ALS, if they're a mean, nasty person. Yeah, I mean, that is true to me. I mean, I'm generally a nice person. Um, you know, it's, with my mom's um, illness, it brought up a lot of my childhood things. You know, I'm the daughter of two geologists. If you know geologists, you can kind of understand. One was a um, Vietnam vet and the other was a Jesus hippie. So, invariably, I did have some childhood trauma. You know, I think through my life, you know, I went, I became a nurse. Um, you know, I've just always loved people. You know, it's just, you know, even though they're mean and nasty sometimes, you know, I just, I, I like people, you know. I, and as I grow up, you know, if it, we're all more alike than we are different. And, you know, whether you're um, black, white, um, brown, Asian, um, I'm not going to say yellow, that's not polite, or red for somebody that's Native American. But, you know, it's like we're all, you peel this layer, we're all the same. And we're all brothers and sisters, whether we realize it or not. I mean... You know, the person that irritates me the most may have something inside of them that is what's triggering me. So, but I thought about this. So, there, you know, I read that book and 
you know, this one lady that they gave kept going. You know, it's like I previously could move mountains. Now I, you know, try to plan something and I have people helping me move the mountain. But that I'm going to do it, that drive, no matter what, isn't healthy. You know, when I read parts, and I know on cutting edge on trauma therapy, um, you know, like, you know, brick and mortar uh, research stuff, um, and there's more evidence that trauma is stored in the nervous system. And, you know, as ALS, as motor neurons, it's a nervous system. You know, I have C9, I probably had, um, I was more prone. Um, you know, I worked as a nurse, you know, wounded healer, heal, you know, help heal others. And I worked, um, you know, first with PD, um, then med surge, then um, IMCU, CCU, and ER. And I was good at it. You know, I was a, I'm a good nurse. Um, I can't physically do it now. And if anything that this pandemic has shown, that um, our health system is really screwed right now. It's broken. I mean, I have brothers and sisters that are nurses um, in spirit. And, you know, it scares me because a lot of the people I know on their off time are drinking wine. I mean, it's like, is it that bad that, you know, a, a, a group of people across the country are becoming alcoholics? I mean, you know, you think about that. We, something's got to change. I mean, and besides the nursing and the physicians, we need to think about our respiratory therapists. Um, they're some of the ones that have been um, so exposed to this um, disease, um, this pandemic of COVID, SARS-2. So, I don't know. I mean, it's just, you know, you hear, here they're talking about um, in, in Texas implementing for the corona vaccines um, or COVID vaccines, um, Pfizer and Medina or Moderna, or whatever it is. Um, I really want the one from Oxford. <laughs> Go figure. But, you know, I had contacted my doctor about being put on the list. And then I hear that there are in a state where I have family in Oregon, um, they haven't even vaccinated with the first um, shot, you know, some of the first responders with EMS. Where is the sense in this? I mean, that is one thing in 2020 I want to leave behind is the absolute stupidity. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, you have a lot of, um, people that are stuck in the conspiracy theories. You have a lot of the political unrest. And I know that there are other countries that are having unrest as well, though <laughs> we're just going to be spectacular in the United States. We're going to have more deaths and crazier politicians. Though, you know, our president elect, um, is much more normal. Um, I don't know. I just think that there's so many people hurting right now. You know, it's like going into the new year, we need all need to do a lot of healing. So how am I going to do that? Yeah. Well, I'm going to keep the meditation. It really does help. Um, when I got triggered with my mom's illness, uh, I went back into the deep meditation things I had done right after I had gotten the diagnosis. And... Um, said, fuck it, I'll try everything, right? Um, had some Reiki done. It worked. Um, have someone praying for angels for me. Yeah, whether you believe in it or not. Um, doing a lot of prayer. Uh, you know, I'm a Catholic. You know, it's, I've been going to Mass on um, online. You know, my family is all different things, and... I am not going to talk about my religion to shove my religion down your throat, and I would like the same. But I have always um, been drawn to Buddhism, and which is a philosophy. So I have been doing a lot of um, that meditation, and it makes it's actually helped quite a bit. You know, just getting that stress out, and that's something with looking at the trauma things. If trauma is trapped into our nervous systems, and hey, if that's true, I'm a perfect example. Hi, I have ALS. Um, 
you know, that's something that needs to be taken care of. And especially with the pandemic, we've got all this stuff going on and everyone, I mean, how many people have lost their job? How many people have lost their business? How many people have lost family members, friends? Um, We've all lost our normal way of life. So we've got all this inside, whether it be um, running, laughing, dancing, meditating, uh, taking that time, even if you don't think you're a good meditator, the mindfulness um, and practices of mindfulness and gratitude can really help. Uh, You know, there's something I used to do yoga when I was younger. Actually, I, I very flexible, so I had to stop. I was trying to do indigo, which was the opposite of my personality. Always going, always bright. Um, and I, I ended up getting too flexible in my knees. <laughs> it's, yeah, not fun. So now I'm doing yoga nidra, N-I-D-R-A, nidra. And they have so many different ones. Um, if you have lost somebody, there is the yoga nidra for grief and loss. There's yoga nidras can be on so many different topics. You can find them uh, for free online. Uh, you can find different areas that may do yoga classes um, and find one to, um, I've been doing them on Zoom. So, you know, I have found that's very, very powerful um, to like a reset, you know, the inside reset. I don't know. I'm going to think I'm going to try to see if I can find a somatic therapist. I mean, hey, I've done occupational. I've done physical. Um, I did a pulmonary function test, which I can tell you that my um, breath capacity has increased since I've been doing the yoga breaths. Isn't that interesting? You know, keep that diaphragm working until it stops. But, you know, hey, I mean, this stuff is actually helping me. So I'm hoping I can do this, you know, the acknowledge the emotions that I've kept inside, um, find peace with them, you know, with the grief with my mother. I mean, that's, grief is such a different thing. Uh, you know, I used to tell my patients, um, and for myself, you know, I've lost people. It's like you have these kaleidoscope of emotions when someone's dying or die has died and the grief is actually the love that you have for the person and it's the loss of that though it's painful i mean when i come to my end i know that i have had a good life and i have done everything i can to show the ones that i love that i love them you know um but when someone goes they're generally okay you know, I don't know where we go when we die. You know, I've heard patients that have had near death experiences. Um, you know, I, you know, we're energy, you know, energy never gets destroyed. So how that energy goes, I don't know. But when you're grieving, you know, I, I used to say that it was like a, um, if you can imagine a big lake with sun on the waves going back and forth and you can see across the lake, and you can see those waves getting bigger, you know, it's kind of like you're on a boat, and you're trying to get across the shore. You're going to get a wave to hit you back at another time, but you'll get forward, and you might go back again, but gently, eventually you'll get to the other side, where there'll be um, laughter and happiness again, not just tears of memories. You know, so current thought is that, you know, you never actually get over the loss, um, you learn to live with it. So like you have the loss here, life grows around it. And emotions will come and go and they'll, you know, but it'll get better. So my mother is still alive. I don't know how. I really don't know how. Um, you know, if anything, that's a good harbinger for me. Um, my grandmother had um, heart disease. You know, she like actually coded while she was in the hospital visiting somebody and lived like 30 years and longer. Amazing, huh? And my mother, uh, you know, I think I'm more worried about skin breakdown and that. But I can't do anything about it. That's not my, I am not that a steward of her. I can love her and support her, but I can't make 
decisions for her. And that's the hardest thing to come to be peaceful about. You know, that's really, it's a hard thing. Because, you know, if anything, I've wanted to help people. Um, I don't want people to hurt. Especially the ones I love. Um, in that caring for my mom, I got triggered. And it opened up memories and that I hadn't, you know, it's like anyone that has a trauma history, you know, it's like you unpeel layers, you know, I've been in counseling. Um, it's just, there's always an onion that you're always undoing. So I found that I had some emotions attached to my mother. Um, not her, you know, as a person, but just some, you know, like memories from the past. And, you know, that's when you're like, oh my God, call a counselor. Well, I did that and I started, you know, from my sister, <laughs> the one that survived breast cancer has, um, she's wonderful. She should have died. It's amazing. She's alive. See another one like that, right? Um, I went ahead and did some gong therapy with a, um, Reiki, um, person, you know, it's like, yeah, I mean, I think some of the original, it was a Zen person. Um, I don't know, I've looked at Zen as a philosophy, and I do believe we have an energy body. You know, if you think about the way our heart beats, you know, if you ever see, get a tracing of the heart, EKG, you'll see there's different rhythms the heart can go. Um, you know, if you have an um, EEG where they have, put the little wig glue in you and have all those marks so you can see your brain waves, that's measuring some of the um, electrical impulses from your body. So yes, I have a neurological disorder that um, destroys the motor neurons, but those have energy too. So it's like, okay, well, let's see. I just kind of got on this serendipity thing. And um, there's a man named uh, Dr. Gabar Mate, if I'm saying it right. It's French. I murder French. Um, but he had a chapter on ALS and it's like, oh yes, you know, I'd seen a YouTube video. He was like, oh yes, this ALS patients. Well, I'm like, what? What about it? <laughs> you know? And um, I guess he, in a chapter in the book, it, the, the book is like, when the body says no. And it's talking about trauma. I mean, you know, it's like, yeah, good trauma therapy. You know, EMDR. Um, you know, I can't say... I did CBT, you know, that helped, but, it, you know, I, I think some of the somatic, the body, mem you know, that, that kind of thing, whatever memories where you store all the stress, you know, you get that, grind your teeth or, um, you know, hold your body really tight, you know, being able to do the meditation to relax that has been very helpful for me. And I'm hoping that um, on this self-exploring self it sounds selfish, I'm not selfish, but, um, you know, it's like I'm, I've been, a, I'm lucky, I am grateful that all the kindness I've been shown, and I've tried to show kindness to others. At times in my life, I have put so much out for others, I didn't leave enough for myself. So, I guess I'm doing some personal, I don't know, internal uh, fixing, you know. I don't know. I mean, I, st I started that, um, what is it, StoryWorth? I think that's what it's called. A little Facebook thing, the um, ask you questions. Okay, you know, I've got two books I'm going to be writing for my um, daughters. You know, leave memories. Um, you know, I started a journaling um, for 52 weeks thing. First one was roadblocks. What obstacles do you have? Well, um, I don't know. You know, in action? No, not really. Um, it With ALS being a part of me, not who I am, I am learning my parameters. You know, it's um, the spoon theory. You have only so many spoons in a day. Or finding the balance is what I like to call it. You know, it's like getting enough calories in to have the energy. And um, knowing that what things I can do and acknowledging there's some that I can no longer do. Um, you know, that's been part of that. You know, it's like, I think I had a conversation with a friend the other day and um, 
I, you know, I, I'm the artist that doesn't do art. Uh, I, I chose, I got an art scholarship, but I chose to go through nursing, um, because truly, um, you know, a bunch of nice paintings didn't make as many differences as the lives that I have been honored to be able to touch. And it kept good shoes on my child's feet. I don't know. Um, I had, the last painting I did was after, um, was, you know, almost a decade ago when I had lost a child in the second trimester. I had done a painting the night before I had to go through the procedure. And it was the saddest painting I'd ever painted. And I found it when we were moving and I had to destroy it. Just that, the, the tears in that was so awful. Um, but I was talking with another friend and all of a sudden the desire to paint came back and I'm like, hey, it's like to express to get those emotions out. I thought, cool. I mean, you know, I'm just, I'm thankful. If that can come back, that's awesome. Um, you know, it's been years, so I can't say that I'm going to be excellent, but I'm just going to be me, just what I do. So we'll, we'll do the journaling. I'm going to keep on the Tedica, you know, this time it's bears, um, bear bile. Am I going to turn into a bear? I just hope they're not hurting the animals. Can't they get that synthetic? Um, and the medical marijuana, you know, everything's neuroprotective. See if I can, um, sorry, I have a little cat being a terrorist. Um, see if I can try the somatic therapy, see if it helps. If anything, if I can stave off um, my cat that's making all the noise, it's Mojo. Um, if I can stave off death for a little while, that'd be good, you know. If anything, it'll make my moment when I'm, the time when I'm going through life review, when I'm actively dying, a little more peaceful. And that's what um, would help. So, 2021 is going to be a year of a, a journey on self-knowledge, self-healing, um, and hope for the future. You know, grand new grandbaby. You know, hopefully a parrot power chair. <laughs> You know, I don't know. I feel blessed and, you know, it's, I just want to thank every person that's watched one of my videos and all those that have helped others during this pandemic. You know, there's so many heroes in um, our lives, you know, you see who got to the Time Magazine, but I think the healthcare workers, you know, our garbage men, our mail men, our grocery store workers, you know, those people are heroes too. And each and one, every one of you that has reached out and helped others. So happy, happy New Year's. Merry New Year's. Um, here's hoping it's a better year. Here's hoping I don't get sucked away trying to get some sparklers for my little one. <laughs> no, it's good. Well, I wish you love. I wish you happiness. And I wish you some merriment with this season. So take care. I'll see you next year. Bye.